Hey gang, welcome to this talk today for understanding object layer mapping in Civil 3D. So object layer mapping can be, it's not a super confusing topic, but it can be a little bit hard to wrap your head around. Uh, the layers in total with the templates, having object layer mapping, that automatic layer creation, having layers existing in my file, where to define them, all that jazz. So let's take a few minutes and just talk about the concepts of object layer mapping, how it works, and uh, some, you know, how, how you can implement it with your, with your project. So let's bounce into Civil 3D. Okay, so I have a few different files open here. And you know, one thing we can take a look at is let's take a look at the Autodesk base template that comes with the out-of-the-box installation for Civil 3D. And let's just take a look at how that works, what's created with that, and then we'll uh, then we'll then we'll jump into a different template file that, that I like to work with as my base template. And uh, some things you can work with it just to uh, just to make things a little bit more automated with that object layer mapping. So object layer mapping resides on the settings tab, right click, drawing name, edit drawing settings, and then object layers tab right here in the middle. So this is the layer that will be created, that the object will be created on. So if you create an alignment, it's gonna to go to uh, layer C road. And if you go to alignment labeling, it's gonna to go to C road text. So just great ways to have your layers defined as you're creating. So, and these, in some, in some cases, these layers can live in the template file. Sometimes they can be created, uh, they can be created as you go. So one thing I like to do is I like to see those layers be created as I, as you go. So think about starting with the least amount of layers possible in your template file, and then letting those layers grow as you create more and more things and more things in your design. So let's go here into this example base file. So right here, settings. In a drawing settings, we're going to go to that display tab. So, one thing that's a little bit different here is that we have a, I, I've put in modifiers. So, for example, you can see that our alignment's going to go to layer C dash align ALGN, and then it's got a modifier suffix dash asterisk. So, that means it's going to take the name of the alignment and create that layer with it. So, for example, we create an alignment and you just leave it as the default. It's going to go C dash align dash alignment one. Same thing with the alignment labeling. So we're going to have C dash align dash asterisk. So that'd be the name. So C dash align dash alignment one dash label and then so forth. So one thing that's nice about this is as you create your alignments, each one gets its own name as it's or its own the name you give it as you're creating it. And this works with your surfaces as well, too. So let's take a quick look through this and let's just, um, let's create a surface and we'll create an alignment afterward. So, and then surface right here. So surface, our surface figure, our surface labeling. So, and then our surface, our tin surface right here is gonna be C topo dash asterisk. So the name you give the surface. And then the same thing with the labeling for the surface, C dash topo dash surface name dash label. So, all right, let's go ahead and create a surface here. So prospector, we're gonna go ahead and create a surface and we're gonna call this video. Oh, let me get the name down here. And we'll just say, okay here. So you can see our surface layer is gonna go C dash topo dash video. So we say, okay. And now we have our surface created. We don't have anything defining it. So let's go ahead and just add those points in. Point groups. and. We'll just add all the points in right here. And then there we do where we have our surface. So you can see our layer count went from 30 to 31 because we've created that surface. CFC dash topo and let's go video right here. And that's, so that's the layer our surface is on. So we turn that off. You can see our surface turns off. And the same thing too, if you were to throw in a, a surface label. So let's just say we throw in a spot elevation. Let's just throw it in right here. You can see there's our spot elevation. We close out of that. And then you can see our C dash topo dash video dash label layers created because we put in a surface label. So if you go ahead and turn that off, you'll see it disappears there. And it's the same thing with an alignment too. So let's just, actually let's make this a little bit less busy. And we'll just throw this on border, border only. And then let's just throw a polyline in here. All right. So let's create an alignment from objects here. Create an alignment from objects. Select the alignment. Doesn't matter about the direction. 
and then right here you can see that our alignment layer is going to go C dash align dash asterisk. So let's give this alignment a name and we'll call it fun times. So you can see our alignment name populates there or our alignment layer populates because we gave it a different alignment name and then we'll just leave the labels as default. So we see we have 32 layers here and then let's say OK. So now we have 34 layers, one for the alignment and one for the labels. So let's see, C dash align dash fun times. We can turn that off and on and then we can turn this off and on. So letting that object layer mapping create the layers as you go with your drawing files. So you can see we've created four layers with our surface, surface labels, alignment, and alignment labels. So this can give you a little bit of flexibility in terms of letting the layers be created as you go. So if you want to define anything as you go, you have the option to define it at that layer. The other thing this lets you do is it lets, gives you a little more, you, you can work with your styles a bit more. So if you have a lot of layers in your template file, you can work with it like this and then try and reduce some of your layers in your styles. Uh, that can reduce flexibility. So if you hard code things into your styles, uh, but you can you can really reduce the amount of layers that are constantly living in your template all the time and just having them used when they're when that object is uh, is, is in there. So I want to thank you for your time and I uh, hope you found this informative. If you, uh, if you just keep tuning into these videos, if you're if you're finding this helps you out with Silver 3D. So thank you for your time.